Good morning and welcome. I have been thinking about more characters within the biblical tradition who help us to consider how we might live with curiosity and creativity and courage for such a time as this. And what I love about the mythic stories within our sacred text is that they're always challenging the status quo. So for example, we have the book of Genesis that lays down some of these big stories. And among the characters are an old couple named Abraham and Sarah, who in their 70s are invited to pack up their bags and to go to a land that God is promising them. And God also promises that he will make them um, the foremother and the forefather of a great nation. Well, like they're in their 70s and oh, I forgot to say, no children. So like, how's that gonna happen? And so Abraham and Sarah move out with their possessions on their back and uh, some of their family accompanying them. And that's how the story goes until the next promise comes. And that's a promise that Sarah will bear a child to which she just laughed. And so the archetype of Abraham and Sarah, and they're meant to be archetypes, right? They're meant to be models for all of us. Reminds me of that saying by the poet Mary Oliver, allow some room in your heart for the unimaginable. So here we are, all of us in this new season of our lives, and many of us would say, how am I gonna learn to live in this new season? Particularly those of us who are older or older yet. And I suspect that although the sun is shining and oh, the flowers are blooming and the vegetables are growing, there is a little bit of a cloud still around how we recreate our lives, especially during this season when we really all just wanna be sharing burgers on benches next to one another in the backyard. So I'm going to invite you to consider what it means to live in the spirit of Abraham and Sarah, which is intended to be the spirit of an entire people who trust that the mystery at the heart of the universe that we call God has a plan for our healing and our wholeness and our joy, and is also providing a plan and a message that says life will go on, and that includes your life. So, as I'm looking towards this summer season, which is normally a season when we all spend a little bit more time together, I have concurred that I've just got to start thinking myself outside of this box that the pandemic puts us in, pay attention to all the protocols and make it work. And if that means, like I did this morning, sending a text to a friend and says, said, I think you have lots of room on your beach for a summer solstice event. What do you think? And then considering who else I might invite to share a meal with me in my backyard. One decision at a time, one step at a time to ensure that this glorious season in Canada that we call summer, that is all too short, is spent in gratitude and grace and joy and thanksgiving. We are those who have inherited the spirit of Abraham and Sarah, who when asked to kind of change the way they were living their lives and change their direction and move out to claim a future that they could never have imagined, said yes, because if we are people born of the mystery we call God, we are people committed to honoring, protecting, and enjoying this gift 
called life. So I bless you. As you allow some room in your imagination. How did that go again? Okay. Allow some room in your heart for the unimaginable. I quite like this image of the chalice and the bread. Wow, under the canopy, it's really high up there. I didn't realize. It reminds me of what I still think is my favorite Psalm and maybe yours, the 23rd Psalm. Why don't you join me now as we say it together? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the right paths for his own name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Wow, that's poignant, isn't it? I shall fear no evil, for thou art with me in thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me. In the presence of my foes, thou anointest my head with oil, and my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. That small psalm is filled with so many images and invitations and promises and consolations that I think speak to our time. So let us break bread together, friends, remembering today as we break bread together all the times that we have broken bread together. Because is that not a symbol of how we are gathered around the Creator and how we are sustained by the Creator. And is not a cup a symbol of total abundance? And even in the midst of this season, good friends, wow, there is so much abundance. I'm going to share with you a prayer for this meal. And I wonder if you can maybe close your eyes and consider all of those communities of faith that have been restorative for you, all of those people who you have shared this cup and this bread with, and maybe not just in sanctuaries called churches, but also around all the tables in your life where you have been provided a place to belong and to grow and thrive. Because this table is only symbolic of every table. Throughout human history, men and women have given wonderful expression to the spirit of life. As they offered insights about human existence and our connectedness with the source of all that exists, Jesus is the story we gather around and give thanks for. Human like us, he discerned where the source is found in the everyday, in human interaction, in feeding, in caring, in clothing, in visiting, in sharing, in forgiving, in being neighbor. He urged people to work together to establish the reign of God by wholehearted generosity, by eliminating boundaries between people, by trust in the goodness of people, and by working for peace and justice in all human endeavors. We remember his total commitment to living fully and loving totally and his faith in a God to be trusted. Whatever twists life could take in this imperfect world. Confronted with failure, abandonment, and a humiliating death, Jesus remained faithful to his belief in a constant and eternal connectedness between human living and loving and the source of all existence. Gathered here to share bread in memory of Jesus, we give our amen to his belief that when we live in love, we live in God and God lives in us. 
and we break this bread. Bread inviting us to grasp what the eye cannot see. God with us in the journey of life. God with us in the ordinary and in the everyday. God with us in our living and our loving. And then we eat this bread, giving our men, our amen to God living and loving within us. And then we drink this wine, wine reminding us of promises to love, of love generously shared, of Jesus who loved so totally and our call to love as courageously as Jesus loved. Let us pray. We give thanks for the spirit of life visible in Jesus, visible in us, visible in people in all walks of life and visible under the canopy of this remarkable grove of trees. We give thanks for faith that recognizes and names this presence and the bonding of all people and we pray for clearer naming and recognition of this bonding in our religion and in all religions so that the peace Jesus yearned for all people to experience may one day be reality in our world. Amen. And so friends, filled with this reminder of how we are walking in the spirit of the Creator, filled with this reminder that we can make room in our imaginations for the life that is yet to come, that will be blessed and sweet, filled with this reminder that we are not alone, that we continue to live as a circle of friends, as the beloved community led by the spirit empowered by the spirit i invite you to go in peace